Welcome. We are the interactive branch of the Canada Water Contemporary um, Theatre Company. <laughs> and um, so we, we, we have a choice for you. We can either present some excerpts from Harold Pinter plays, or we can talk to you about orchestral music. So show of hands, Pinter. Right, firstly, a very warm welcome to this um, WY's interactive music session in association with Game Music Connect. I'm John Broomhall, and I'll be asking our esteemed guests to share some top tips and pointers about the orchestral uh, recording process generally, but also specifically when it comes to recording music that's going to be delivered in segments, sections, layers, motifs, stingers and so on. So ultimately for an interactive implementation along the lines we've, we've seen today. I'm just going to move that because that's going to get really annoying. So we have three brilliant guests. Um, we have Alistair Lindsay, head honcho of um, audio for Sony, who's overseen a raft of amazing PlayStation music and audio content. We have uh, conductor, orchestrator, arranger, extraordinaire, Alan Wilson, who's recorded more orchestral music than most of us have had hot dinners. Um, and we've got co-founder of Game Music Connect, uh, founder of Screen Music Connect, and obnoxiously talented composer, James Hannigan. Please will you give him a very warm welcome. So I guess most, most people in this room are going to be broadly familiar with what's involved to get from a MIDI mock-up to a finished orchestral recording. Uh, so you've got something starting with maybe sample libraries, and now you've got to think about orchestration, uh, maybe embellishing that music, uh, literally copying music and music prep to get it on the stands for the orchestra, orchestral musicians to play from. Uh, you've got to think about venue, who's going to conduct the music, who's going to engineer and mix, um, and... Um, which choice of orchestra, you've got to think about Pro Tools prep, uh, counts and click tracks and prelays of electronic stuff. And um, so I guess most of us are familiar with those kind of general concepts. So what I've asked our guests to come with today are um, key tips uh, for that process, lessons they've learned, um, gotchas, pitfalls to avoid, generally how to kind of head off trouble at the pass, right? So um, let's get right to it with our first tip, and that is, sure, get interactive, but don't overcook it. Alistair. That'd be good? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, um, I guess what does that mean? So I'm going to echo some of uh, Kieran's um, presentation earlier because what's interesting is he said anything goes and that is that is so true but more often um, you know the way we've always approached things is especially when we're working in-house with our in-house composers uh, with a, in an in-house developer is look at it from the top and just like what is the maximum crazy stuff we can do um, and then start to sort of filter it down and, um, and and simplify things. But it's got to obviously be in, in, in context, but often we've had the luxury of um, you know, time, budget. Uh, mm. But when it comes to uh, recording, obviously you've got to be a bit more aware of um, the knock-on effects of doing some crazy systems <laughs> and what that would ha the impact of that is on the budget, musicians, and just general kind of right down to copying the music on the on the pages. So, um, yeah, you'll probably you'll be familiar with some of these things. So, uh, the, a lot of these slides are particular to uh, one project we did a few years ago where it was just, uh, I think we went really, we did overcook it um, and we could have simplified it. But actually, one of the remits what we've tried to do is, is, is really kind of overcook things and then see, you know, learn from that and see how other people can learn from that. And, and it's a good place to be, I guess. So, you know, something like this is simply, um, you have one piece of music, you section it up, 
uh, and another queue uh, layering, um, and then we even then split it. So basically, you know, deconstructing all your music, um, and then uh, this is uh, this was actually pre Wise uh, project. So um, we were using Sony's in-house tool, and it was is a bit of a crazy system we we didn't actually have to rely on any programming support and this is just a spreadsheet of everything it could do so because of the nature of this music it was uh, kind of from baroque to classical and tw early 20th century um there was a lot of different textures and uh, and um time signatures and all sorts of crazy key changes and things in there so we built a system that would basically know what the music was doing at any particular time and how it could transition in and out and all sorts of crazy things. Um, and, and then obviously, yeah, this is the Scream, what it was called. So it was very kind of programmatical, uh, sort of not very user friendly, <laughs> but uh, it was really, really, really powerful. And uh, I see Simon sm smiling there, you're familiar with this. <laughs> um, uh, but the, the beauty of something like Wise is you've got that uh, uh, visual queue of, of um, building waveforms and, and working that way as well. Um, you know, we we did every possible technique, you know, from simple crossfading, um, kind of transitions and looping sections, as you actually saw Kieran mention, things like that. Um, now, this was probably the worst thing we actually decided to do was, if you can imagine uh, going from uh, one piece of music into another possible I don't know, three or four cues, but these were in different keys, and we actually wanted to musically modulate into those keys. Um, this is just one example of how many different modulations we do. Well, that's fair enough, but when you're recording these as well, and the orchestra are just going, what are you guys doing? <laughs> and then actually, you know, you look at the, the musical, you know, how they're working, you go, that's just a bit weird. And it, it was, it was just, but we just thought, why not? Let's give it a go. Um, and we did get a few giggles out of it, but it was just like, you can imagine how much that time that takes and, you know, studio time and musician's time is is, is pretty precious. Um, so we never did that again. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, but we did, we did, did build a rubber system and uh, this is an example of something where, you know, we are going from the two potential keys and going out to two potential uh, keys and, you know, just... That was, looks familiar to a slide you saw earlier, you know, looping and transitions and things. So this, th these are all kind of familiar techniques. And we even went on to, uh, there was a number of elements, uh, parts of the game where it's like, time was arbitrary. We didn't necessarily know where um, events were gonna happen. So it's like, we don't really wanna record that, but we have to record something. So we recorded a lot of um, just sustained strings. And it's, um, you know, pretty easy to do, but then, we also recorded a few little kind of woodwind trills and little motifs. And then within the, 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 the uh, audio engine, kind of sync them randomly to play. So you weren't locked into any timing with this sustained string. And that actually really worked. That's a really good technique and it worked really well, kind of combining the, uh, the, the uh, uh, kind of linear piece of music as such with some random musical motifs. And I guess that's probably similar to like what Kieran was saying on So Let Us Melt, that musical sound design and you know keeping it harmonically simple and, and stuff. So you can kind of see some uh, uh, connection here. Um, yeah, and one thing as well we found on uh, going pretty crazy is uh, having to do dual passes. So we essentially the system had three different stems and we'd have to do two different passes musically because we wanted to have like reverb tails and things like that. So when it came to the mix, you start to, you know, you're cutting out, you're editing, you're piecing it back together. But what it meant, that's a screen grab of Pro Tools mix session. We basically were overloading the system. This was at Air Studios as well, and they were kind of like running on the limits. So it was like we were, yeah, pushing it a bit too much. And you can imagine um, the engineer managing something like that. But, um, you know, yeah, we didn't do that again. Actually, with that system, which we call the checkerboarding, we've, we've kind of stopped doing it, really. It's, you, you can kind of understand, okay, this is what you can do, but actually, was it end, you know, the end product, is it really, you know, worth 
going through all that grief for um yeah i think that's that's me on yeah and I, I mean, that echoes what um what kieran said earlier on right that sometimes simple is is fine definitely too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah okay cool Thank you.